Welcome back to Lipid Biosynthesis on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. In this playlist so far, we've talked about two different classes of lipids and their synthesis. We've talked about uh, fatty acids in general. We had a separate part on, we sort of combined them, triacylglycerols and phospholipids. Now we're going to get into the steroids. And really, to synthesize steroids, we have to synthesize cholesterol first because cholesterol is sort of the parent steroid. All steroids come from cholesterol. So that's what this video and next series of videos is going to be about, cholesterol biosynthesis. Now, I'm going to mention this before we actually get into the phases of it. It's a very long, uh, somewhat complicated process, so I'm going to break it into several videos. Ultimately, what we're going to do in this video is we're going to see how we generate what are called isoprenoid units. So isoprenoid units, or isoprenes, are molecules like these two down here, isopentanyl pyrophosphate and dimethyl allyl pyrophosphate. These are very important molecules because not only can they be used to synthesize cholesterol, they're also used to synthesize a very wide variety of compounds that are necessary for life. For example, the active form of vitamin D, calcitriol, is synthesized from these. Uh, which is vitamin D, um, coenzyme Q is synthesized from these, and there's a lot of other stuff. So generating these isoprenoids is very important, and in some organisms, not humans, they can be used to make a lot of other different things. In fact, in humans, I will say, heme A, which is an isoprenylated uh, form of heme, actually requires these in a different form, which we'll eventually talk about. So that's what we're doing here. We're generating isoprenes, but we'll then see how these are used to make squalene in the next video, and then in the video after that, cholesterol. Generally speaking, cholesterol biosynthesis is divided into four phases. Um, we're going to do phases one and two here. Phase one is to synthesize a molecule called mevalonate, and phase two is the conversion of mevalonate into these isoprenes. Now, in cholesterol biosynthesis, it's going to require a lot of acetyl-CoA. And so this is going to be another case um, very similar to what we talked about in the video where we talked about regulation of fatty acid synthesis uh, quite a few videos ago. Um, when, we when we're in a fed state, we're going to have presumably a lot of acetyl-CoA that's built up, and we've got to do something with that acetyl-CoA. Some of the acetyl-CoA, as we mentioned, will go towards fatty acid synthesis, and then those can be used for triglycerides and phospholipids. Um, some of that acetyl-CoA will go towards cholesterol synthesis. And so if we're in a fed state where we have high energy, good energy charge, we're going to be doing steroid synthesis like this. I will say if we are in a fasting state, the liver in particular is going to take these acetyl-CoAs and actually make ketone bodies. We'll see the branch point in just a minute. All right, so the first step in isoprene synthesis is we have to take two molecules of acetyl-CoA and condense them. Um, this is actually a reaction we've seen several times uh, before. We've seen this actually in beta oxidation and ketone body metabolism. It's going to convert these into a condensed molecule, acetoacetyl-CoA. Then we have this enzyme called HMG-CoA synthase. It's going to take a third molecule of acetyl-CoA and condense it with acetoacetyl-CoA, and that's going to give us this molecule called beta-hydroxy-beta-methylglutaryl-CoA, but most people will just call it HMG-CoA, and you should actually learn it as HMG-CoA because you're going to see that term a lot. Now, HMG-CoA is a branch point in metabolism. So if we're talking about the liver, which is actually the main organ or tissue that does ketone body metabolism, or at least makes ketone bodies and then makes steroids, um, the liver has to decide what to do with this HMG-CoA. Now, it's more detailed than this, and we'll talk about this in another video about regulation. But if you're in a fasting state where the body needs energy distributed to it, the liver will actually take this HMG-CoA and convert it into ketone bodies. And so we could hypothetically draw an, a reaction going to the right here, which would be the enzyme HMG-CoA lyase. The enzyme HMG-CoA lyase is the committed step in ketone body biosynthesis. But in the fed state, where we have high energy charge and plenty of you know, high energy molecules floating around, we don't do that. We actually use this enzyme. This enzyme is called HMG-CoA reductase. This enzyme alone is going to consume two molecules of NADPH, and it's going to give us this molecule, mevalonate. Notice mevalonate also has its coenzyme A group 
uh, reduced off. HMG CoA reductase is a very important enzyme to know about. Uh, not only is it heavily regulated, um, as we'll talk about in a separate video, but HMG CoA reductase is also the target of statin medications. The initial first statin ever made, lavastatin, was found to be an inhibitor of this enzyme. And since statins are usually prescribed to reduce cholesterol synthesis, to reduce the amount of cholesterol in the body, it makes sense that statins would target this enzyme for inhibition because HMG, HMG CoA reductase, as I have here, is the committed and heavily regulated enzyme of cholesterol and isoprenoid synthesis. So if you want to shut down cholesterol synthesis, what you've got to do is shut down this enzyme. And that's the reason this enzyme is heavily regulated, but in any case, it's going to give us mevalonate. That's phase one of cholesterol synthesis or isoprenoid synthesis. Phase two is actually going to give us the isoprenes. So we're going to start with mevalonate up here. The first enzyme is mevalonate 5-phosphotransferase, sometimes it's called mevalonate 5-kinase. It's going to take a phosphate from ATP and phosphorylate this green OH to give us O-phosphate. That's 5-phosphomevalonate. We're then going to consume another molecule of ATP, phosphomevalonate kinase. It's actually going to phosphorylate this phosphate. We don't really see that too much, but we now have 5 pyrophosphomevalonate. Recall that a pyrophosphate is actually two phosphates bound together. So this is 5 pyrophosphomevalonate. We now have another kinase. Um, this time it's going to phosphorylate this oxygen up here in red. And this is going to be five, or excuse me, five pyrophosphomevalonate kinase, and this is going to give us three phospho, five pyrophosphomevalonate. Kind of a tongue twister there. Now, three phospho, five pyrophosphomevalonate is an extremely activated molecule because this phosphate right here, including this red oxygen, is a good leaving group. So if I could somehow generate a lone pair on this carbon right here, I could actually easily remove this phosphate and generate a double bond right here. And it turns out that this carboxyl group is removed as CO2, and that decarboxylation triggers the elimination of this phosphate. And so now what you have here is a double bond, and the phosphate is gone. This molecule right here, they call it delta-3 isopentanyl pyrophosphate. Normally we just eliminate the delta-3 and just call it isopentanyl pyrophosphate, or IPP. In fact, from now on, I will most likely refer to it uh, about half the time, perhaps, as IPP. This is one of the basic isoprenoid units. This is one of the basic ones, but we can actually isomerize IPP into what's called dimethylalleyl pyrophosphate, or DMAP. And all it does is just move the double bond over here. And so these are our two isoprenoid units, the two most basic ones. Now, it turns out what we can do is we can actually condense these in different patterns into larger isoprene units, okay? So notice that each of these actually has five carbons, okay? So if we combine two of them together, we'll have a 10-carbon unit, and we'll actually see that in the next video. But for now, this actually concludes phase two of cholesterol synthesis. So really, phase one is generating mevalonate, and of course, we see hmg coa reductase in this pathway. And then we also have phase two, which is the generation of the two isoprenes. Now, a couple of other things I just wanted to make sure you get out of this is, first of all, again, we generate our isoprenes. We can condense those, as we'll see in the next video, into larger isoprenes, which will allow us to generate squalene. Also, HMG-CoA reductase is the heavily regulated enzyme here and the committed step in cholesterol or isoprene synthesis. And so if you want to shut down cholesterol synthesis, you should shut down this enzyme, whether it's through natural biological regulation or through a statin drug, which inhibits this enzyme. The other thing to remember is that HMG-CoA as a molecule is a branch point in lipid metabolism. And from the liver's perspective, if the body is in a fasting state, this will actually be consumed by HMG-CoA lyase, the committed step in ketone body synthesis. But in the case of the fed state, which is what we're considering, this is actually going to go towards mevalonate, and we're going to bypass the lyase and instead use the reductase. There's one other thing I want to point out to you, and this is really just to generate one isoprene, one of these, just one. Notice that it takes three molecules of acetyl-CoA, two molecules of NADPH, and three molecules of ATP, just to generate this. 
I don't know about you, but from what I've seen, that seems like a very energetically exhaustive process. It should also tell you that cholesterol is of vital importance to the cells because the cell probably wouldn't be willing to waste this much energy to make one molecule of cholesterol if it wasn't that important. And in fact, what we're actually going to see is that to make one molecule of cholesterol, you actually have to have six of these. Six molecules of one basic isoprene. So basically take all these numbers I just gave you, three acetyl-CoA's, two NADPH, and three ATP's, and multiply that by six. That's just to get one molecule of cholesterol. So it's a very important molecule, and considering the fact it's used to make steroids, it's used to make vitamin D indirectly, it's used to make bile acids for digestion of fats, it's used to uh, hold membranes together. It's very important. So keep that in mind. All right. Hopefully this video made sense to you. Please make sure to like it and subscribe. And in the next video, we're going to talk about how we actually condense these isoprene units together to generate the precursor to cholesterol, or at least one of the precursors, and that is squalene. Please join us there. Make sure to like and subscribe.